So yes, we are not always typically flat out told that we're not accepted, but we're made sure of it in other ways. Like if you take a scroll down my TikTok lane, I was being accused of blackfishing even though I'm half black. And growing up in a majority white school with blonde hair and blue eyed girls and I didn't look like them, I was made aware that I was the black friend. But that I wasn't black enough for the black people, so it didn't make sense. And there have been countless looks and stares and people telling me things that made me know I'm not one of them. Our second challenge is being a trend. There's this idea that all mixed kids are beautiful and it's trendy and it's cool. But at the end of the day, we're just human and we really don't want to be fetishized as a trend. Part three, the lack of representation. Growing up, there was like Alicia Keys, Mariah Carey that I could see were like mixed like me. But a lot of things I was watching like Disney princesses and stuff like that, there was like one for every culture, but not one with multiple cultures, <laughs> which left me feeling like I had to choose a side. Disney, if you're out there, let's start making a mixed princess. Hello and welcome to BW London podcast. Well, when I started these videos about is biracial black, I, I'd only intended to do the one video, but it, it provokes such a conversation, even on other platforms that I've had with other people. I've done a part two and I'm about to do a part three. So, um, yeah, one thing, because I do have a lot of um, mixed race people in my family, I have mostly taken on the, um, their opinions, really. But um, that video was was interesting because on one of the platforms that I was on, that was the biggest argument. That once once you once you've been mixed and you are black, and um, th there is a strong argument for that in the sense that one thing I have learned with talking to adult um, mixed race people is that they want to make that decision for themselves, and obviously that decision is going to be determined by what they look like, um, what family are actually in their life to give them self-awareness of who they are so there's so many different circumstances and nearly every mixed race person mentions that every circumstance is different so how a person is going to consider themselves is going to be based on their circumstance her po her points were you know that's something that that's much more in line with my family that so many people go through when they consider themselves black and then black people tell them they're not black and again it's all very much determined by how they look because she looks more european and more than likely her dna would come out more european so where do you draw the line because she clearly wants to be considered a black woman but um based on her looks it seems unreasonable so you know it, it, it it's a real thing I know all mixed people don't look the same right come on now you've made a post on all the mixed people they have the black dominant dream gene. There's some mixed people that's half black, half white. They look like this. Rashida Jones. And we got DNA tests available. The information is there. Some mixed people are mostly white, not white. Some mixed people are both black and white. And some of them are mostly black. Not all of them are the same. Not 100% sure about claiming biracial people that are mixed with black as black people. So in that video, that girl was basically saying that if you're biracial mixed with black, then you shouldn't count as a black person because you're light skinned with green eyes. Um, not every biracial person is light skinned with green eyes and like to see hair. <laughs> my dad is very dark and my mom is white. I did not choose my parents. I did not choose to be born, but I was. And since then, I have been treated like a black person by white people. I've never received white privilege. I've never not been racially oppressed. My childhood growing up in an all white town was extremely traumatizing. And I honestly feel like conversations like this are divisive. But I still stand by what the facts are a biracial person is exactly that they're biracial if there was a particular medical problem that required dna you would have to know about your black and your white dna so those are just the facts outside of the politics of it all isn't it for people of certain ethnic backgrounds finding a bone marrow match can be difficult but for those who are biracial the odds are even tougher health specialist Denise Dodor is here to explain the dilemma people of multiracial backgrounds face yeah it is an interesting dilemma this year this year's historic election illustrates just how diverse our nation is but experts say you'd never know that by looking at who's registered to donate bone marrow one local woman's mixed heritage sheds a spotlight on another growing group of individuals in desperate need Growing up in two cultures is something 26-year-old Chrissy Kobata embraces. You always kind of really took pride in your heritage because 
It's something that's unique and special. But being half white and half Japanese has put her in a unique situation. In April, Chrissy was diagnosed with myelodysplastic syndrome. It's a bone marrow failure, so my bone marrow isn't producing any of the healthy cells it needs to be producing. She's stable now, but she could downward spiral tomorrow, next week, or next year. No one knows. What doctors do know is without a bone marrow transplant, the disease will worsen. They immediately tested my brother. And it was devastating when we found out that he wasn't a match. Each year, of the 10 to 15,000 patients who need unrelated bone marrow matches, only a quarter find one. The odds are much worse for Chrissy because she's biracial. Of the 7 million people registered in the National Marrow Donor Program, only 180,000 have multiracial backgrounds. The larger the donor pool, the, the, the better the chance of finding a match. Jimmy Loon is a marrow expert for One Lambda, the nation's largest supplier of bone marrow testing kits. He says the goal is to find someone with matching human leukocyte antigens located on chromosome 6. This is called a haplotype, and it's made up of alleles inherited from each parent. Some of Chrissy's alleles are specific to the Japanese population, and... You also have to match the, uh, the alleles that come from the Caucasian gene pool. A Japanese white mix is her best bet, although Loon says the Caucasian part of Chrissy's alleles may also be found in someone Chinese. Haplotypes vary because of genes handed down through generations, so the more people who register, the better. Making all the difference in the world. I mean, you could be saving someone's life, literally. And that's probably the most powerful thing to take away from it. So, um, yeah, let's, let's continue the, the discussion. I've got brothers with mixed race children, so, and they enjoy, they enjoy the discussions about it. And um, it just helps create an understanding and getting other people's viewpoints. But one thing I must say is that black people can get so touchy about the topic. It's unreal. Um, in terms of, no, they're black, they're black. It's, it's crazy. I'm half black. Ain't no such thing as half black. You don't mix white milk with chocolate milk and get half chocolate milk? It's still chocolate. When you ever see half chocolate milk? <laughs> what kind of milk is this? It's half chocolate. It's ain't no such thing as half chocolate. It's either chocolate or it ain't. Yeah. It's either chocolate or it ain't. Oh. Everything is defined by the majority DNA. Listen to me, biracial Africans. Listen up. What the hell is a biracial African? See how they play these games? Half black. No such thing as being half black. African DNA dominates all of the DNA. Once you are mixed with us, you are us biologically. But I will never claim you until you become psychologically African. Ain't no half black. How are you going to take dominant genes and mix it with recessive genes and get half black? If the gene is recessive, which means it cannot stand the power or resistance of the dominant gene, then the dominant gene takes over the recessive and that baby becomes an African. Girl, she also mentioned about um, having roles and being represented as a mixed race person. Obviously, as a black woman, I'm like, oh, you're not represented because I find you represent me and in an abundance. But of course, I'm not biracial. So for all... That was, that was new to me. I heard her. I was like, oh, okay, there hasn't been a biracial um, Disney princess and all the stuff she said. So, you know, to me, that's just a woman of colour experience, isn't it? And I guess that's why people have such a problem differentiating because you, they see it as women of colour and white women. But to me, that's looking at things from a white person's perspective. It really is. That was the whole reason why biracial people were considered black in, well, in my era anyway, because we knew that white people didn't think of them as mixed they thought of them as black so you know as people that struggled in society as black people we had no problems claiming baby where are you from i'm not trying to be mean or anything or trying to offend anybody i'm not coming from a place of hate but black folks definitely claim biracial people more than white folks claim biracial people the only time i've ever seen like a white you know white people in general kind of like claim not talking about if it's their own kids but even when it comes to their kids, like the only time they ever claim like a biracial person is they're white passing or they're one of those people who specifically got with a black person because it was their preference to have a mixed child. And I've also seen people who are mixed be treated as if they are white and then they develop this kind of racism, colorism against their other half of their own genetic material. It's very weird 
but I'm just saying I'm not coming I'm not trying to offend anybody but that's my experience so where are you from because I've never seen that you know but like I said it's very much based on circumstances I think it's a good conversation to have and um yeah okay well thanks for listening